Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Talented Television. I'm your host, Kimberly E. Shell. I'm so happy today to be at 1500 South Las Vegas Boulevard. We are at Legends Restaurant and Venue, a delicious place to eat and also a place where you can come to hear great music. I'm so excited about my guest today. Stay tuned to see who it is. Welcome back to another edition of Talented Television. I'm so excited today to be in Legends. Legends is located on Las Vegas Boulevard where you can come and listen to music and comedy and all those great things. Plus, the food is delicious. Today, I would like to welcome my guest, Mr. Jay Devon. Jay is a talented comedian, so put your hands together out there. And while you're doing that, stop for a second and press that subscribe button. Welcome, Jay. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. I tell you all, no tales. It's hard to get a hold of this man, so I'm excited <laughs> to have him on the show today. So Jay is a local comedian who's been kind of everywhere, and he's blowing up here in Las Vegas. So I haven't had the opportunity to have a comedian on the show as of yet, so you're my first. Thank you. Thank so you. So tell I'm me a little here. about yourself, uh, Jay. Where'd you grow up? Are you initially from Vegas? Uh, no, I'm originally from Philadelphia. Okay. And um, I lived in Philadelphia until I was 13. I mm -hmm. uh, moved to Alabama. I lived there for several years. I uh, graduated high school from there and then uh, joined the Marine Corps. Oh. So, yes. Okay. What did they say? Hoorah? Hoorah. Hoorah. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Awesome. Awesome. So. so, what did you do in the Marine Corps? And thank you for uh, serving for us. Um, I was a supply specialist. Supply so, I specialist. supplied uh, ammunition. So okay. I, was, uh, I worked with uh, you know the weapons and ammunition and uh, munitions and things of that sort. So I supplied it to the guys who were out on the front lines, you know, doing the the fighting and stuff. Nice. So, yeah. so how'd you go from doing the weaponry and having the bullets and all those things to doing comedy? Um, here's. I've never, I never really thought of myself as being, you know, a funny guy. You know, okay. I watched a lot of comedy growing up. We all did. You know? Right. We all snuck and watched Eddie Murphy Raw and mm -hmm. <laughs> Richard Pryor on the Sunset Strip and things of that sort. Um, I never really thought of myself as being, you know, stage funny. You know, what I mean, I would tell funny stories to my friends and things of that sort. And uh, around 1995, uh, 94, mm -hmm. um, I was stationed down at El Toro. Okay. Uh, in Irvine, California. And I was at a talent show on the base. And I had just gone to support the talent show. You know, there's not a lot of stuff to do on base. So if something happens, you go you check it be out. There. Right. So I go to this talent show and um, I'm sitting there and suddenly they call my name. And I'm like, they're calling my name for what? You know, and so <laughs> right. my buddy is sitting next to me. He's got this, this, you know, Cheshire cat grin on his face. He signs me up to do stand up. Oh, wow. In this talent show. <laughs> so it was a surprise and so to you. It was you. a surprise to me. I go up, I do like three minutes, and uh, I thought it was, you know, the most terrible three minutes ever. I told some stories about us hanging out. Mm -hmm. um, but the guy who ran the talent show was an actual comedian. Oh, wow. He was in the Marine Corps at the time. Uh, he just passed recently, as a matter of fact. Uh, rest in peace, Bobby Law. And, um, you know, he's a well known comedian on the LA circuit, uh, he's also a musician. But um, he's done Comic View and Def Comedy Jam and all of those things back in the 90s. But he was an actual comedian, actually out there wow. working as a comedian while he was still serving in the Marine Corps. Right. So he uh, pulled me to the side. He asked me if I wanted to do comedy. And I was, you know, uh, sure. And so he took me under his wing, taught me how to write, you know, how to write a bit and how to, you know, collect my thoughts and put them into, you know, uh, a story format mm -hmm. and took me out to my first few clubs and, you know, 
the rest, as they say, is history. So The rest yeah. is history. Yeah. Wow. So tell me, like, when you're doing comedy, I sing. So I have my little ways of preparing, yeah. you know, to do singing engagements and things like that. What do you do to prepare for comedy? Um, it's, it's the same preparation. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, we're... We're both entertainers, mm -hmm. you know, there's the, uh, you know, like I start thinking about a show the minute I wake up, you know, wow. if I have a show that night, I'm already, you know, I mean, as a matter of fact, when I book the show, I'm already, you know, thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the few days up to the show, I'm collecting whatever material I want to use on that particular show. Um, you know, and of course, there's always the ability and you as a singer know this to be able to riff and, you know, run and things of that sort gotcha. and so we do that as well but for the most part if i know i'm doing 20 minutes i have 20 minutes of material mm -hmm. ready to go so if all else fails i'm going to do this 20 minutes of material. Solid 20. um and then the the day of it's uh you know like i said you wake up you you know you're running through your set all day in your head you're mm -hmm. you're telling yourself about everything that could possibly go right but you're also telling yourself about everything that could possibly go wrong right and so you know and and, and it's hard you know i mean you i know you understand as a, as a performer as well mm -hmm. it's hard to not defeat yourself before you even walk on the stage right you know and it's like and and there are times that by the time the show happens i'm so exhausted because i've process so many different things about this show and by the Absolutely. time the show starts it's just like you know you know what let's just do it so you know, I know you're a family it. man you have children yes. right so do you ever use your children for material oh definitely they I'm at that age too where, where people always ask me like do I plan on having any more children that's the question when you start getting to your point people are like are you going to have any more kids you think you're going to have any more kids I'm like no nah, I'm not going to have any more kids because truthfully I just don't want to bring another child into so much hate and then when I say that to people, they'd be like, man, you're right. There's a lot of hate in the world. You shouldn't bring a child into so much hate. And I'm like, what the world? No, I'm talking about me. <laughs> I hate my kids, man. All of them. Like, they suck. They're terrible, man. Like, my kids ain't nothing, man. You're, you ever had a kid that you don't even want to know? <laughs> my kid tried to play basketball, man. I'm an athlete. My kid tried to play basketball. You know what I'm talking You look like an athlete, sir. My kid used to play basketball, man. And, and man, look. He was terrible at it. Like, he was... He was so bad at it, and then people would be like, man, whose kid is number seven? I'd be like, man, not mine. <laughs> Oh, my kid, oh, definitely. They deserve to be used as material. They, <laughs> right. They don't have a choice. I, uh, I, I love use. I love talking about my kids. My kids are um, they're teenagers now. Okay. And so they're in that. You know, I like you, but I don't really like you phase. You know, they're they're going <laughs> right through that age. Yeah, like, they're yeah. in that age range where it's like oh, you used to be so cute a few <laughs> years ago. Uh, but no, I, I do. Um, and that's most of my comedy. You know. Okay. Um, I don't do a lot of uh, comedy outside of myself. You know, mm -hmm. most of the stories that I tell deal with me, whether it's you know uh, me as a child and my upbringing, um, raising my own children, relationships that I've been in, um, or just my views on relationships, and then of course uh, just my everyday life. You know, just right. getting older. You know, I'm, I'm in my mid forties now, and so okay. you know, so uh, so I tackle all these things on stage. Um, I'm forty six years old, and I have a fro hawk. Um, yeah, that's, that's the cut. I, mean, I should have did that a long time ago. I should have just, just mailed it in and just was like, you know what? It is what it is. But I'm trying to still, I'm, I'm still trying to look something. What is this? What is it doing? Is it, does it make me look younger? Like, I don't want your husband to beat me up. I don't, I don't, need, I don't need that in my life right now. He was, and he was looking at me, she was like, but you're not really, you're not really doing that, are you? That's not what you're doing, are you? <laughs> Traffic stops and then connects on the back end. <laughs> I'm out here though, man. I'm trying to live, man. It's uh, I, mm, I don't know, man. I love the ladies. That's the thing for me right now, man. I mean, not not right now. I mean, I I've always loved the ladies. I love them. Y'all are beautiful. Y'all y'all are beautiful. Man. I I like the fact that y'all get to say whatever y'all want to say. Yeah. That's the beauty of being a woman. Like y'all come out of the womb and just be able to say, like she was just like, oh, you know, 
and you couldn't even say nothing about it, right? You looked at it, but you wasn't going to say nothing. She was just like, oh, he's fine, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying I'm fine, I'm saying she said I was fine. Mm. So uh, part of my story that I didn't uh, talk about is that I did comedy for four years before taking 15 years off. Oh, wow. So I was doing comedy from 94 to 98, and mm -hmm. then I took 15 years off. And it was a product of, uh, you know, relationships, okay. you know, my children coming into the world and mm -hmm. me starting to, you know, uh, take care of them. Um, and then in 2013, I had actually gotten laid off from corporate America. I'd been at my job for uh, several years um, and I got laid off and I tore my Achilles tendon oh. playing basketball. Uh, first of all, I was 41 years old, so there was no reason for me to be out there playing basketball. That's the first. Uh, so let's just start the story with the fact that I was you were too living damn your old best to life. be out. Exactly, I was too old to be out there trying to play basketball with these young cats. Right. And uh, I ended up tearing my Achilles tendon. Yeah. I was laying on my couch uh, in the recovery stage for about two months, uh, mm -hmm. eight weeks. I had to, you know. And during that time, I wrote a lot because I also write. I I didn't mention that, but I'm also a writer. I write urban fiction. Mm. And um, yes, so I'm, I've been writing urban fiction for years now. So you have to be. You have to. You have Absolutely. to be. You know. um, but during that time, I started writing, and um, but I also started writing about what I really wanted in my life. Mm. And I had spent at that time 15 years in corporate America. After I got out of the Marine Corps, I had been in the Marine Corps, and so I wrote down this list of all these things in my life that I had accomplished, and all these things in my life that still were, you know out there that I hadn't done. Comedy was one of those things because I had never really seen, you know, to fruition. I'd never seen it to fruition see, to find out exactly how far I could go with it. I just abruptly quit because the woman that I was with at the time wanted me to get a real, real job. <laughs> Fellas, don't be letting these women tell you to go get a real job. Hustle, get your hustle <laughs> on. Don't sell drugs though. And, don't uh, do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, and, and you know, and, and so I thought to myself, I want to do that. I want to get back on stage. And I literally said, I want to get back on stage. Um, I got my cast off and this is how the universe works. And, and I know you probably have a bunch of stories like this. Mm -hmm. I got my cast off on a Tuesday, that Thursday, uh, July 13th. I still remember it like it was yesterday because it, it was the day after my son's birthday. My, my middle son's birthday is born on, is on July 12th. Mm -hmm. July 13th, I go to my first open mic in 15 years. Wow. I walk into this open mic. I put my name on the list. I have a cane and I'm still on a walking boot. Wow. And uh, as the night goes along, I'm, I think I'm like eighth on the list. Mm -hmm. As the night goes along, I'm getting more and more nervous and I'm going, I can't do this again. This is, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I had my chance, whatever, whatever. Right. I get up, I go to the bathroom and my intent was to sneak out, mm -hmm. you know, after I came from the bathroom. Right. Well, as I'm coming out of the bathroom, the young lady who was hosting the mic was going into the bathroom. And she sees me, mm -hmm. you know, as she's walking into the woman's bathroom, I'm coming out of the minute, she goes, oh, you're next, you know? She goes, there, there, there's one more and then you. And I thought, oh, she caught me. Like, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, can't I can't walk out now. now. <laughs> I went up, I did five minutes, and um, that was it. That was the, it. The fire came back, and I've been on it ever since, and nobody's ever gonna talk me off a of stage again. So I'm on stage until the day I drop dead until the day my heart stops. Tell me about some of the places that you've performed around uh, Las Vegas. Uh, in Las Vegas, I have performed uh, at plenty of spots. I've actually done a show here. Mm -hmm. uh, we held the show here, uh, my birthday show, okay. back in November. And um, But I've done a lot of the local venues. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I can name them, but, you know. Um, but I've done a lot of the local venues. I've done the... Uh, LA Comedy Club okay. inside of the Stratosphere. Mm -hmm. um, I know I can name that. That's a you know. Right. And then um, Planet Hollywood. Um, there's a club inside of there called Las Vegas Live inside of the V Theater, awesome. and I perform there. Uh, currently, I'm uh, working hard. Las Vegas, <laughs> Las Vegas. Listen to what I'm saying to y'all. Uh -huh. 
I'm working hard to get into the Laugh Factory, so I need y'all to help me get into the Laugh Factory There next. you go. And, and he then, connects uh, out there with yes, the Laugh Factory. Yes. Jay Devon is trying to get in, so, so I got, open the doors, I got right? clips, I got whatever you need. So, uh, no, but I've actually been up there and I've talked to the, you know, talked to the, uh, the guys who work there and stuff like that. And it's, and it's just a grind. You know what yeah, I mean? Like absolutely. You, you know, and I'm sure you know as a singer and, and you know, as a, uh, you know, media media personality. Um, I've done radio before. You know, okay. I had my own radio show for a couple of years uh, because I look way better off camera. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, I, I have a face for radio. Like, you're but, uh, hilarious. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, you know, it's it's just it's a grind. You know what I mean? And that's the absolutely. And, but it's the it's a beautiful grind. It's a beautiful struggle. At the end of the day, I wouldn't choose anything else and that's what you know? it's all yes. about that's why i developed uh talented television because i wanted people in las vegas to have the opportunity to do what they love yeah. and for others to hear about this person jay devon and others that i have interviewed so if they see you that person at the lab factory they can contact you i'm bookable there you I'm go googleable too hey <laughs> i'm googleable all right, I know you're out there enjoying this interview with Mr. Jay Devon, the hottest new comedian in Las Vegas. Remember to press that subscribe button. You don't want to miss who's next on Talented Television. Stay tuned. My favorite part is coming. Jay's going to teach me something. Yo, this is your boy, your everyday dude, comedian Jay Devon. You are watching Talented Television with my girl, Kimberly Shell. Keep watching. Alright guys, welcome back to Talented Television. I am having fun on the set with Mr. J. Devon. And now, he's going to teach me something. I don't know what it is, but here we go. <laughs> I've never done any comedic work. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to teach you, uh, I don't know if I can teach you, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to uh, tell a joke okay. and, um, and see what you got, see what you, you know, see, see what kind of chops you got. All so, right. All right. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. And it's, and, it's, and it's a lot like singing. Like I said before, you got to have the right tone, you got to have the right, you know, the right <laughs> energy when you, when, you, when, you, you know, when you hit those certain notes or whatever. So got you. this is your joke to tell. Okay. And I'll let you, I'll see if you can. All right, Get all right, cross. let me see. You, got, you need your glasses? Nah, nah, Jay. Jay, <laughs> don't the, call me out on TV. <laughs> don't call me out on the YouTube. You got, your, you got your phone real close to your face. <laughs> like, I already I know. <laughs> I just got my first pair of, uh, I just got I my first pair you. of, uh, uh, what they call them, the progressives. Uh huh. So now I got to do all this, to, you know, oh, no, no, tilt no. my head back and forth trying to see you. I'm like, you got to get used to that. Oh, it's too. ridiculous. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm like, man, I can't do this. I'm going to have to just walk around and just only be able to see in 2D. I don't need to see in 3D. Why do I need right, to Right, right. Why, why do I need to see in HD? I don't need that. I just, oh, my gosh. Let me see what this joke is saying. Give, okay. me, give me just a second. I'm going to play the little, uh, what's the music that, oh, I can't call the show out. Y'all know the music that I'm talking know. about on the game show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. And you got to deliver it to them and make them. Okay, make them laugh. Yeah, make them laugh. They out there. <laughs> they out there waiting for you to laugh. They out there waiting for you to laugh. Okay, let me read it one more time. All right, y'all. I never wanted to believe that my dad was still in from his job as a sign worker. I said it wrong already. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait. <laughs> now you understand how hard it is. Okay, and we got to go and again. we got to go up there with no cards. We're supposed oh to walk up there and just God. have all this stuff committed to memory and just be able to tell it. And right. Okay, we're going to do it again. Take 2. <sighs> Take 2. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So I never wanted to believe that my dad was stealing from his job as a road worker. But when I got home, all the signs were there. <laughs> no. 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 You, can laugh. you can laugh at your own joke. You can laugh at my joke. They would have been tomato. I tried, Jay. <laughs> So Jay, tell me um, where we can find you. If people want to um, find you on Instagram or Facebook, your social media, go ahead and shout yourself out. 
Um, Jay Devon, uh, J-A-Y-E-D-E-V-A-N, uh, J-A-Y-E-D-E-V-A-N, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I have a YouTube page if you want to go onto YouTube and uh, see some clips of me performing. Um, I don't have a lot on there. Uh, I'm, I'm now I'm just starting to build up my YouTube page, so my YouTube page is building up, and I will be uh, launching my website soon. Um, I also have a uh, something that I say regularly that I uh, have branded onto a T-shirt, mm -hmm. um, and it's hashtag temper yourself and hashtag apply as needed. Okay. And so those are, you know, my That's uh, your branding. My branding. Gotcha. And so uh, those t-shirts are available um, on the Childish Brand website or you can hit me up on any social media outlet and you can and I can link you to that. And uh, I will be soon um, creating wristbands with those mm -hmm. on it as well. So um, that I'll be able to, you know, Give out after out. shows and hand out after shows and stuff. Um, there you go. Uh, just something for, people to, remember, you know, yeah. some, something for people, people to remember. You know, something for people to remember me by. Definitely and, remember you. Um, but all those social media outlets, and I'm Googleable. There it is again. <laughs> I just just want y'all to know that, and I'm bookable. I'm bookable. I have I have everything free after like the first week in April. I'm completely free. So uh, if you have a birthday party, if you have uh, any kind of event, wedding. Um, I've actually done comedy at a wedding before. Wow. So, uh, at a wedding. At a wedding. I you had will a, not be doing comedy at my to, wedding. You know what? I'm going to be crying. It was weird. Be, thank you guys so much for watching Talented Television with Kimberly E. Shell. I have truly enjoyed you as a guest. Thank you for taking time out for me. This thank you guys. And definitely keep watching Talented Television with Kimberly E. Shell. Thank you for having me. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Really appreciate it. Awesome. You all stay tuned. Keep watching. You never know who's next. And it could be you. If you have a talent or something you'd like to share with the Las Vegas Valley, make sure you contact me at talentedtelevision at gmail.com. Bye. Do it again. What was your sign out? Oh, the heart uh -huh. and then the salute. I like that. Oh. Peace out. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more with Jay Devon. Crazy, man. My, my son is the reason for this haircut, believe it or not. My son's 13 years old. And he was like, Dad, you should get your haircut like mine so we can look like it. Exactly. <laughs> but I laughed. I was like, <laughs> I was like, dude, you're not even my son. Um, <laughs> he's not. Don't judge me. I'm doing a great job as a father. I'm just saying. Your mom been selling both of us on that dream for way too long. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I mean, you brought it to the table. Let's address it. You know, let's talk about it. Let's... <laughs> we can do a lot of stuff together, but we'll never look alike. Like the kids are. I mean, like I was in the store the other day. It was this lady. She had her uh, kid with her, and uh, you know, it was, me and the kid was kind of going back and forth, we was looking at each other. You know, I was having fun with the kid. I smiled at him. He smiled at me. I smiled at him. He smiled at me. And then finally I hit him with one of these little click click, you know, that little, you know, that thing right there, right? And he shot back at me, which wasn't weird, except that he turned his like this. <laughs> and started running behind the box of the cereal. It's like, whoa, he gonna be a thug. That dude right there is just, you might want to get your bell ready, money ready right now, lady, because that dude right there is gonna be, he gonna cause some problems. You, know? <laughs> you might want to get little Jamal some therapy right now. He had it for a life of self-destruction. I don't know. It's crazy, man. Like, it's a misconception that you know, I'm, I'm a big dude. You know what I'm saying? You, I'm sure you probably get this misconception a lot. You know what I'm saying? Just people always think when you big, you tough. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they always think like, oh, that dude, you know, he's 6'3", 220. He's, he's must be tough. No, nah. I'm not, man. Look, these hands are pet, cat petting hands. Like, these are. <laughs> These hands pet kittens well. Like they, man, I'm not here trying to scratch my knuckles up for you, man. I'm not, that's not who I am. I'm not, I'm not tough at all, man. Here's how I know I'm not tough. I got pumped in the grocery store the other day. <laughs> True story. I'm in the line, I go to reach for my wallet, and I step back on the person's shoes behind me. Right? Total accident, but they lost it. Come on, son, you're not just gonna step on my shoes like that. What's up, son? 
I was like, what? I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to. I, my, my bad. You know what I'm saying? They was like, no, 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 son. You got to take this L. I was like, uh, no, I don't. I know all my alphabets. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Like, I, <laughs> why are you trying to give me an L? I, can I buy a dial first? Can I? Why I got to take an L? Why I got to take an L? They was like, no, son, you don't talk about You got to catch these hands. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not that good at catching. I ain't even got my glove. Why are you trying to make me catch someone out of the club? I don't, I'm not ready. You know what I'm saying? Just totally unprepared, right? They was like, no, nah, son, I got to beat you down for stepping on my shoes. And I, man, I looked at it, man, because now I'm like, you know what? You're not going to punk me, right? I'm like, look, first of all, um, little girl, uh, <laughs> where your parents at? Like, I, like, I got to know, like, why 